Welcome to the ESP Web Presentations webinar. My name is Wendy, and I'll be the facilitator for today. In this webinar, we will demonstrate how to create, edit, save, and send a presentation in ESP Web. Our first step is to select the products we would like to present to the customer. Let's say our customer has asked us for products for an upcoming charity walk. If we needed inspiration, we could come here to the Idea Center to help us with which products to present for this event. For our upcoming charity walk, we see that t-shirts and water bottles are among the list of popular search terms for this event. Let's go ahead and click on a link to instantly view search results. Once we have our results, we can use the guided navigation on the left-hand side to filter. The color theme for this charity walk is red. So I'm going to come down here to color, and I'm going to click on red shades. I'm now going to go ahead and select some products that I want to use by marking the box next to them. And then I'm going to scroll up here. And I'm going to click on copy to and add them to my clipboard. Now I'm going to do another search for water bottles, since I already know that that's a popular search term. Once I type in water bottles, it's going to pull up my results. Again, I'm going to use the guided navigation to filter by red shades because I want red for my theme. I'm going to go ahead and select my product. And then once again, I'm going to come up here and copy them to my clipboard. Now, after we've saved all the products we would like to include in the presentation, we're going to come up here and click on the clipboard icon. We can select all, or we can mark products individually. I'm going to go ahead and mark the products I want to use in my presentation, and then I'm going to click on Create Presentation. In the Create a New Presentation window, we can start by entering a name for our presentation. Then we can go ahead and choose a customer from our CRM. Now, if you start typing a customer and it's not in there, a Create a New Company link is going to show up, and we can create our customer from here. Once I select my customer, I can choose the visibility. Who do I want to see this presentation? Everyone in my company, only myself, or just a select few? In this section, I can choose what project folder I want to save this presentation to. Just like in the customer, I can create a new on the fly if I wanted to. Over here to the right, if we had a saved presentation template we wanted to use, I could select it by clicking on the thumbnail image. Now that we've finished entering the information, we can click on the Create button. We're now brought into the Edit Products area. If we wanted to add more products into the presentation, we can click on the arrow next to Add Products and add products from our projects, searches, or the clipboard. Now, before we begin editing the products, let's see how we would like this presentation to look like by going into the design section. There's going to be two tabs within this section, theme and layout and fields. We're going to start with theme. We can use this theme tab to select the orientation of the presentation as well as choose a theme and color scheme. ASI provides several themes in a variety of colors. However, we also have the option to create a customized theme by uploading our own background image. To upload a theme, we're going to come over here to Create Theme, and then we can go ahead and choose the file from our computer. Now, our file must be in a JPEG, a GIF or a PNG format. It must be 1,200 pixels by 1,600 for a portrait, or 1,600 pixels by 1,200 pixels for a landscape, and under 4 megabytes in size. So once it's uploaded, we can designate the image as the page layout for any of the available pages within our presentation, as well as update additional images if needed. We can also configure the standard font. It is important to note that the images within the same theme 
must be in the same orientation. This means that if we wanted to create a theme that is available in both a landscape and a portrait orientation, each orientation would need to be its own theme. We can use these options to select if we want to make this presentation visible to all users within our company, only the record creator, or the team and visuals. Now, once we finish creating the theme, we can click on Save. Our custom theme is now available for use, and we can click on it to select it. Scrolling down, we see that we can load more themes, as well as configure the header and the layout footer. Layout. We can use these fields to configure the header and footer for the presentation. The information in these fields can be edited in the settings section. For both the header and the footer, we can use these drop-downs to select a different layout option, as well as use this button to select an image from the image library. If we wanted to show page numbers on the footer, we could check this box. In addition to the options within the themes, the design section up here also contains the Layout and Fields tab. The Layout area enables us to select how many products we would like to have displayed on each page of our presentation. We're going to go ahead and select two products per page. The Fields section is where we can configure the data fields within the selected layout. Changes made to the data fields in this section will impact all the products within our presentation, but we can change field labels names individually in the Edit Products area. We can change the order of the product fields by dragging and dropping them by clicking on these dots and dragging. The order numbers will automatically change to reflect the new order of the product fields. This icon over here indicates the default fields for the selected layout. When we're working with data fields, it's important to be mindful of the layout we have selected and the number of fields which are displayed. Showing too many fields on multiple product templates can lead to the presentation appearing very cluttered or even running out of room on the page. Also, we'll be able to show or hide fields for individual products back in the Edit Products section. Now that we've designed our presentation, let's go back to the Edit Products area. In this section, we can edit the product order, change the image, create a virtual sample, edit any information within the product fields, and modify individual prices. We can reorganize the products by clicking on an item and dragging and dropping it to a new location. If we needed to remove a product from the presentation, we can click on the X icon. Let's scroll down. Here we can edit the product information by clicking on the Edit link. We can update the field label and the text within it. Once we finish making changes within a field, we'll click on Save. We can also use the Show and Hide links to show or hide any information. If you hide it, it's going to be grayed out. And if it's showing on the presentation, it will be bold. So if we wanted to use a product image from our computer, we can click on the Upload a New Product Image link here, and we can upload an image. If the product is virtual sample enabled, meaning that the image can be shown as a blank or with the Crest Customer's logo, we can hover over the image to see additional options for display. For more information on how to create and manage virtual samples, you can take a training class or review the training video. Scrolling down here, we can manually change the price by typing in these boxes or using these checkboxes to select which columns we would like to display. If we've made any changes to the pricing, we can click on Save. To make changes to multiple products simultaneously, we can do so in the price calculator area. 
at the bottom here, we can use this comment section to convey a message to the customer regarding this product. Once we've finished editing the product information, we can move into to the Price Calculator tab. In this tab, we can adjust all prices or selected prices. We can select items by clicking on the checkbox next to the price grid here. Whether we have selected all prices or selected, we can adjust the pricing based on a profit margin or adding or subtracting a fixed amount or a percentage. So let's say, for example, we wanted to give this customer a 10% discount on all products and quantities. We would go ahead and choose all prices and then click and enter 10 in this box. After we've made our selections, we can click on apply and then save. We can now see that the prices display in red because they are lower than the current ESP price. Prices will turn green when they are above the current ESP price. We can use this box here to round the prices to two decimal places. We can also manually adjust the pricing by entering information into the boxes and clicking on Save on the pricing grid. At this point, we've set the layout and design options, edited the product information, and modified the pricing. Let's scroll up and move into the Settings tab. In the Settings area, we use the presentation, the presentation title, the customer name, and our contact information. If we have chosen to use a header, editing this information here will automatically update that header. Next, we can modify the visibility for this presentation. We have already done this in the Create a New Presentation box, but can come back here and change it as well. When we choose to make a presentation visible to teams or individuals or everyone, we'll have the option to allow those users to copy the presentation. This means that when they have it in their ESP, they can copy it and make a new presentation, and it will just duplicate that presentation. We also have the option for the price grids to display in reverse order, meaning the highest quantities would be shown first. Checking this box will show that the price grid displays properly on the customer-facing presentation, but will not affect how the pricing is shown in edit products or price calculator tabs. After we make changes in this area, we need to click on Save Presentation Details. The settings area is also where we can see our options for using pages, such as cover, contact, introduction, or closing. When working with introduction and closing pages, we can use this dropdown to select an uh, existing page or create a new one by clicking on this button over here. However, we do not want to use an introduction or closing page, so we're going to leave both dropdowns on the select options. In addition to the settings, we have a comment section. This area is where we can view any comments entered within the presentation, as well as choose whether or not our customers are able to enter comments. Now that we have configured and saved our presentation, we're ready to send or share it. This toolbar up here provides us with numerous options for saving, sending, and sharing as well as the ability to make a copy of the presentation and save the design as a template for future presentations. Copying a presentation will enable us to change the presentation name, visibility, customer, and project folder. Saving the design as a template means that the configurations that we have made in regard to the layout, colors, and data fields will be saved as an option for future presentations. Let's save this presentation as a template. So let's name it Charity Walk. And let's click on Save.
The share button here will open a window and provide us with links to the presentation in an HTML or PDF format which we can copy by clicking this link here. We also have the option to export to Microsoft PowerPoint. Additionally, we can click on this link and select an ESP website or company store where we can publish this presentation as its own link. If we wanted to download the presentation, we can click on this link and then save the presentation as a PDF onto our computer, or we can use the preview to open the presentation in a new tab so we can look at it before sending or sharing. So take note of our red theme that we have uploaded and our two products per page and all of the changes that we've made. To email the presentation, we can click on the Send button. In this window, our first step is to enter our customer's email address. Then we can add a copy if we wanted to, and we can also edit the message. Once we're finished entering the email information, we'll click on Send Presentation. The completed presentation will now be on its way to the customer. So now that we've reviewed the features within the presentation creation wizard, let's create one more. Let's go ahead and create a new presentation for ceramic mugs. I'm going to go back to ESP Web. I'm going to search for ceramic mugs. I'm going to go ahead and select a few products. And instead of adding to the clipboard, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Create Presentation. I'm going to give it a name, choose my customer, and now I'm going to go ahead and choose my template because I already like everything about that template, so I just want to keep it. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and uh, check it off and hit Create. By choosing that template. The theme, layout, and color scheme is already applied to the presentation, meaning we can just focus on editing the product information and the pricing. So if I wanted to, I could come down here and edit anything that I wanted to. After we finish configuring the presentation, let's send it to our customer. We can click on Send and enter their email address. And then I can go ahead and click on Send Presentation. And that's it. The presentation is on the way. So whether we sent this presentation, saved it, or both, the presentation will be saved in the projects area of ESP Web with the folder we selected when we began the presentation. In addition, the presentation will also be available within the customer's record in our CRM. Click on Presentation. And here it is. Our charity walk is listed here under their CRM record. So this does conclude our webinar on ESP presentations. If you would like more information on ESP presentations, the ASI Knowledge Base has videos and articles available 24-7 at kv.asicentral.com. You can also contact our technical product support team from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, by calling 800-546-1350, option 2 for support, or by emailing support.asisexual.com. Thank you so much, and have a great day.